la paz del Señor esté con cada uno de ustedes. Muchas bendiciones, hermanos católicos y amigos. Mi nombre es Oscar. Gracias por escucharnos por este canal. Defiende tu fe católico. Invitándote a que puedas suscribirte a nuestro canal. Y a los que aún no se han suscrito, los invito a que lo hagan. También dale like al video para que YouTube lo pueda recomendar a muchas personas. Bueno hermano, te invito a que hagamos esta oración. Dios te salve María, llena eres de gracia. El Señor es contigo. Bendita tú eres entre todas las mujeres y bendito es el fruto de tu vientre Jesús. Santa María, Madre de Dios, ruega por nosotros, pecadores, ahora y en la hora de nuestra muerte. Amén. En nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches, hermanos católicos. Bueno, estamos con otro tema más. Francis is an expert at producing cowards. Would you now allow this one, who has pushed aside the true Pope and has attempted to sit on a chair that is not his, define what the church is to be? As for the beast that was and is not, it is an eighth, but it belongs to the seventh, and it goes to destruction. And yet this usurper of Peter's chair has counted life as naught, while Francis proclaims the devil's voice to be the voice of the Holy Spirit. Francis is an expert at producing cowards. By preaching dialogue and openness in a welcoming spirit, and by highlighting always his own authority, He makes it seem that one who opposes him and what he proposes is an enemy of the church. And yet is it not the blood of the cowards, yet it is not the blood of the cowards that is the seed of the church. It is the blood of the martyrs. And Rome has been literally consecrated by the blood of Christians. Again, my friend, speaking to me, but I believe to all of us, you cannot, indeed you must not, go to Rome and play nicely. The Queen of Martyrs has called you. And you cannot parcel out truth in pieces. After all, were we not told that the truth would set us free? The Synod has gathered cowards in Rome. Those who not only refuse to die for our Lord and His Church, but indeed demand that his eternal truths be changed. And if you play nicely with these, then you mock the martyrs. And although playing nicely might ensure you are not removed, I again quote Tertullian, The usual complaint is, I have no other way of earning a living. The harsh reply can be, do you have to live? I ask you, Bishop, do you have to live? In fact, should you live? when you've been called to die. It is easy to assert that no real damage has been done by the sin. 
but it is done untold damage in attempting to cheapen what Christ proclaimed was worth his life, and for which he indeed shed his precious blood. Would you now allow this one, who has pushed aside the true Pope and has attempted to sit on a chair that is not his, to find what the church is to be? As for the beast that was, it is not. It is an eighth, but it belongs to the seventh, and it goes to destruction. Christ has proclaimed the sanctity of life. It cannot be otherwise than sanctified, because he has created it, and he has died for it. And yet this usurper of Peter's chair has countered life as not, for he has endangered souls by proclaiming that they are justified before God, as they are, with no need of repentance. And he has welcomed those who glorify abortion and has offered to correct no correction thereby counting the lives of all those babies who have perished in this manner as nothing. Ignatius of Antioch wrote, It is outrageous to utter the name of Jesus Christ and live in Judaism. In other words, it is outrageous to utter the name of Jesus Christ and then to live as though he had not come. Ignatius also wrote, I have many deep thoughts in God, but I take my own measure, lest I perish by boasting. For I myself, though I am in chains and can comprehend heavenly things, the ranks of the angels and the hierarchies of principalities, things visible and invisible, for all this I am not yet a disciple. And what then, Bishop, shall make you a disciple? Be advised of this one thing. Playing nicely with those who attack truth makes no man a disciple. Yes, the church welcomes sinners, but she welcomes them to the truth which is Jesus Christ. And if they are not living in truth, then she calls them to repentance. How can we declare that we love when we would allow souls to perish by assuring them that conversion is not needed? Play nicely while the devil leads souls to hell. Play nicely while Francis proclaims the devil's voice to be the voice of the Holy Spirit. The streets of Rome are now littered with cowards. Where is the one who will say with Ignatius of Antioch, Now I begin to be a disciple. Let fire and cross, flocks of beasts, broken bones, dismemberment come upon me so long as I attain 
to Jesus Christ. No te olvides de suscribirte a nuestro canal, dale like al video para que YouTube lo pueda recomendar a otras personas y activa la campanita de notificaciones, deja tus comentarios y nos vemos en un próximo video. Bendiciones.